Scotty Pippen, a player widely regarded as the second greatest Bulls player of all time, behind the GOAT, of course, a top 50 player of all time, six-time NBA champion, one of the greatest defenders in the history of the game, and a Hall of Fame legend that will always be remembered as a big piece for the Chicago Bulls dynasty of the 90s. But while Scotty's greatness and really being underrated throughout his career will be lasting as the years go on. Pippen has suddenly started turning on all of those who he was close to throughout the time period playing in the league, burning bridges, throwing people under the bus, and giving some of the worst takes we have seen in recent memory. That it's now getting to the point where Scotty is tarnishing his own legacy and what the younger generation will remember about him. And it's what we'll be talking about further in this video. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bull Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now, some of you already know this if you've been following the channel for a while, but I was fortunate enough to witness the Bulls dynasty in the 90s. Yes, I'm old. I was a kid during those years, but unlike a lot of younger Bulls fans today who weren't born until after the Bulls' last championship, my first basketball memory was the Bulls winning the championship in 92 over the Portland Trailblazers when I was six years old. And I remember falling in love with the game, wanting to be like Michael Jordan, wanting to be a star in the NBA. Of course, like 99.9% .9 of kids who dream of becoming a player in the NBA, it didn't happen. But my love for the game, the passion that I have for, and of course, being a Bulls fan started there. And see, when you're a kid, you're not paying attention to all the outside drama. It also helped that there wasn't social media at that time. You didn't know the ins and outs of the business side of basketball, why players get traded, the on-court schemes and systems on offense. You simply watch the game, watch who scores, and you cheer for your team to win. That's it. So while there was this drama brewing behind the scenes, sometimes not behind the scenes, specifically with Jerry Krause and Phil Jackson, but as a kid, you didn't follow any of that. So now growing up, and especially after watching The Last Dance and knowing some of the challenges and issues this team went through during those glory years, you see why there is some bitterness, some resentment from players, even 25 years later. And that couldn't be more palpable based on what Scottie Pippen has been saying about his time with the Bulls. Obviously, you saw a couple years back when Pip was launching his new liquor brand as well as his book. He was making appearances on people's shows. The one that comes to mind was his appearance on the Dan Patrick show where he openly called Phil Jackson a racist when he called for that final shot to go to Tony Kukoc in the 94 playoffs over the New York Knicks. He was also going in on MJ for how selfish he was as a player. And now, most recently, after his guest appearance on the Gimme the Hot Sauce podcast, which our guy Stacey King hosts, I'll leave a link to that in the description in case you missed it. But where you had Scottie Pippen throwing blows at his former coach and teammate Michael Jordan talking about how they were selfish people, how the Last Dance documentary was really just a ploy to make Michael relevant again and revitalize his career for the younger generation, how the documentary was really all about Michael and didn't cover why the team, the team, was great as a whole. Also claiming that because MJ and Phil's selfishness, that was ultimately what broke up the team in the 90s, which we all know couldn't be further from the truth. No, it was the fact that Krause was selfish and didn't want Phil Jackson coaching the team anymore, knowing that Michael Jordan would retire even if Phil wasn't going to be there as the head coach, and Krause choosing not to re-sign any of their old veteran players or trading them away to start building for the future. And look, while I get that the documentary praised Michael Jordan and the film was centered around him and it didn't put Scotty in the best of light when it came to highlighting him sitting out that last play drawn up for Kukoc or him opting to wait to have surgery in that final season until training camp instead of the start of the summer so he could actually rejoin the team sooner. I get it. The film worshipped Michael. And Scotty, who was an enormous piece of that franchise, was left out of the light. But you have to remember, this was MJ's team. He was, and still is, an international icon, widely known as the greatest player of all time. I'm sorry, but how did you not expect that to be the case in the documentary focusing on Michael Jordan? And it wasn't all flowers for MJ either. They put Mike in a bad light as well, showing how he berated players, would get in fights with his teammates. MJ got heat in that film as well. But for Scotty to come out after the documentary, years after they all played together, and to be criticizing his former teammates, burning bridges, and holding grudges so many years after the fact when you're in your 60s now. Like, come on, time to move on. It's not healthy to have all of this built up resentment over something that happened years ago. At that point in your life, you should be making amends with people you felt did you wrong throughout your life, not making it worse. And honestly, this is why I feel bad for Scotty. Instead of just looking back on those years, having fond memories of playing on one of the greatest dynasties ever assembled, remembering those six championships and what your contribution was on those teams, and how that made you a Hall of Famer and a legend amongst basketball fans. Instead, you're here souring the memory of it all. And for what? Just to get your side of the story across? Just so you can have the last word? What good is that going to do? And I feel for Scotty because clearly the man is not in a good place right now. He's not in the right mental state. 
I mean, some of the things he's saying are so objectively untrue that it makes you wonder if he's starting to lose it completely. And you can't blame the man for hurting right now. His wife divorced him after cheating on him for a number of years. She then goes on to date Michael Jordan's son, which is just insane to me and an ultimate slap to the face for Scotty. The playing days are over. They've been over for a while. The playing days are over. Well, they've been over for a while. But for a time, he was the ambassador to the Bulls, but they got rid of him and brought in Tony Kukoc to take on that role. And for Scotty, he's struggling to stay relevant. His wife left him. His former team fired him. He's lost a lot of money on bad investments, according to him. Things are not going well for the former All-Star. And rather than seeking the help he probably needs, you just keep seeing him come on these shows and seeing these outlandish things for shock value. And it's a sad state to see. I'm actually going to be having Stacey King back on the channel later this summer. I'll have to ask him about all of this, and maybe, maybe he can give me an appearance with Scotty on Bull Central. Unlikely, but that would be something. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments about Scotty's most recent statements on the Gimme the Hot Sauce podcast. Let me know down below. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.